N90X Extreme Net Scaler Training. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use App Expert templates for SharePoint. Now, whether you have SharePoint 2003 or 2007, it doesn't matter. It's going to work for you. So, check this out. Uh, here is my Zen server. I've got a, my, my Net Scaler running, I've got SharePoint running, and it's, my SharePoint is available at IP address.145. And that's about it. My Netscaler is pretty bare bones. Uh, we'll go into the Netscaler and take a look. If I log into my Netscaler from the GUI, this is my SharePoint server. It's at dot one forty five, but I've got no compression. I've got no caching. I've got no acceleration. I've got no connection pooling. I've got no uh, offloading. These are all features that are available on the Netscaler, and these are all the features that will be applied when you use the app expert template for SharePoint on the Netscaler. It's really powerful. So let's get to it. What I want to do is go into App Expert and click on under Getting Started Import App Expert Template. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to find my template and open it. Click Next. Now uh, specify an application name. So in this case it's, it's, it's SharePoint 2003, but again it could be 2007. I'll just call it SharePoint 2003. I need to specify my backend servers. Now if I wanted the Netscaler to talk to the backend servers using HTTPS, I could click this button and it would use port 443. But uh, I'm okay with clear text for now. Uh, my backend server, as I mentioned, is 145 create and close. I only have one SharePoint server in my infrastructure. This is just a demo. But if you've got multiple SharePoint servers that have the same content on there, they're synchronized, you're gonna put you're gonna add your additional servers here, of course. Click next. Now I need to specify my public endpoint. Again, this is the endpoint where DNS is going to resolve to your SharePoint server. I'm gonna use 146. Click next. Okay, finish. The wizard is going to run. Now, so far, uh, the app expert templates that I've shown you, I've just gone through the wizard, installed it, and we kind of left it at that. And I'm sure you have a lot of questions, so hold on to those questions. We're going to do a deep technical exploration into app expert, and I'm going to show you at that time in more detail what exactly is happening under the covers. How is it working? Here I've got a warning because some of my features are not enabled. Or, so I just click yes and it's going to enable the features. It's a really great way. Cache has not been set so I'm going to say yes so I can enable the cache. I'll give it 200 megabytes available for caching and click OK. And that's it. If I go into applications under App Expert, I'll be able to see my SharePoint application, how it's been configured by App Expert. Now that you've loaded in your app expert template, the first, the first thing you want to do is go into your load balancing, check out your services, and I've already done this, but you want to double click on the service that represents your, your back end and go into advanced. You want to enable compression and TCP buffering. Okay, that's the first thing you want to do after you've run the template. That's going to enable compression to be applied to this service and TCP buffering you to accelerate uh, connections to your application. Click OK and then your application should come up uh, all green under App Expert. All green as we see here. Let's take a look at caching. What's what's happening? Uh, first let me go to my my, uh, my 146 is my public endpoint and if I just crawl through this site a few times, click on a few uh, buttons, gives the Netscaler a chance to start caching and doing some compression on what it sees. Okay, so uh, we've done that. 
Let me go into caching, integrated caching. Click on that. Click on Cache Policy Manager. And click on View Cached Objects. You can see now that after a few clicks, the Netscaler has cached everything and anything that it's supposed to cache. So in this case, we see mostly graphical files and some documents uh, that are being cached. And they're already in the cache. So what that means is when successive requests come in for these documents or these images, they will, they will be served from the Netscaler and not from your backend server. This lessens the load on your backend servers, allowing you to do more with less or serve more users with less servers. All right, if I wanted to, just real quick, I could flush the cache here and do it again. Uh, you know, flush the cache if I needed to. But I'm going to close out of that. Now, compression. Are we getting compression? How do we know? Let's take a look. I'm going to open up a different browser because I've got a header tool that I can look at uh, things. I'm going to start recording on my header tool. And I'm going to go to my public endpoint. It's asking me to log in. Okay. We can see using this tool called HTTP Watch, my browser is sending in its header that it is capable of receiving compressed, compressed content using either gzip or the deflate compression algorithms. And on the response the headers received from the server, we can see that the content is being compressed coming from the server and I am receiving gzipped content coming from the Netscaler. So this is a quick way to verify that the Netscaler is compressing and we saw that content is being placed in the cache. I hope this has been a helpful tutorial on how to configure SharePoint on the Netscaler using the App Expert templates. You can see that in roughly seven minutes, we've been able to configure a rather complicated and complex application with App Expert templates. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.